Hi and welcome to this week's tutorial. This week I'm going to be showing you how to make this lovely three tier gold mask wedding cake. Um, so you can see here we've got loads of different techniques. In fact there's, there's a whole list of techniques on here that we're going to learn. We've got the cake lace, we've got the lovely shimmer uh, design that we've painted the shimmer on here so we've got the nice two-tone effect. Uh, we've got the lovely um, big garden roses uh, which are really fun to make. Uh, we've got these lovely naked, naked leaves which are very in vogue so we've got the naked leaves. Uh, we've got stenciling, uh, we've got gold leaf, we've got these lovely little cutters um, and then obviously just covering the cake as well. So loads to cover on this cake. Um, so it's going to be a really good, exciting tutorial to watch. Um, so uh, this cake is probably ideally suited um, for sort of intermediate to advanced uh, cake decorators um, just because there's a lot of different techniques uh, involved. Um, but if you're a beginner you can always have a little shot. Um, obviously it's ideally suited for anyone who's having a wedding or even a very luxurious uh, golden wedding would be really nice for this one as well. Um, and the time to make this cake, you really want to give yourself at least two or three days to make this one, just so you can do it in stages. So you may want to ice your cake, leave it to dry overnight, and then start making the flowers, etc. leave them to dry overnight, and then on the third day, sort of put it together. So it's not three full days, but just step over the three days to get this beautiful uh, finish. So hopefully enjoy watching this tutorial. Okay, so before we get started making this cake, I just want to go through a few things. Uh, and you can see I've got a bit of a junk table going on here. I just, um, for this cake, we're going to use lots of bits and bobs. So it's not a cheap cake to make because we're using lots of accessories. Quite often I like to make cakes that are just using the basic tools, like the PME tools, uh, these tools here. But this one, I have got a lot of gadgets and things that I want to use. The biggest gadget is this, this boy here, okay? Uh, this is a fantastic cake stand and it's so sparkly and lovely. Now I've got this on hire and it's from a company in London but you get them, you get them all over the world because I saw them at lots of websites, you can buy them um, and uh, I'll put a link at the bottom where to buy this from because uh, I can't remember the link, the name of the, the company um, but there'll be a link at the bottom and it's, it's fantastic and it's not that expensive to hire it and it's absolutely uh, stunning so uh, we'll put the link there and you can hire that which is really good um, which is excellent. So so. Even putting a plain cake on top of the stand is going to look fantastic. So that's that's a good thing about it. So so we're halfway there with the battle. Now over here, I've got a little collection of bits and bobs. So first of all, the, the design that I sort of came up with, um, what I wanted to do was try and use lots of things to create this cake. The first thing that came to mind was this. And uh, I was at Cake International um, at the weekend, and Stephen Benson, um, that's the guy who m creates these cutters um, from sugar-artistry.com, um, he's uh, created these lovely cutters, and they call them naked leaf cutters, which is really, really cool. Um, so I th how can I incorporate this into the design? So I wanted to use these. I wanted to use a stencil and do a sort of stencil design. So I've got the stencil, it's a new stencil that I bought as well. I got this from the Cake Decorating Company. Uh, I love this um, cake lace uh, mat here, um, so I wanted to use the cake lace mat, uh, which I've used in the past, but I want to do it sort of more contemporary, so just going from metallic colours with that one, which I think will look really nice. So we've got that, that one there, hopefully that will be nice. So a lot, quite a busy cake, but if we keep it all neutral colours, then hopefully it will come really, really nice. And it seems to be what's in vogue just now, is going for different textures and lace and contemporary, a little bit vintage uh, for this sort of style of wedding cake. Um, and then I was very lucky to be over in America recently and uh, I popped into its um, Sugar Art Studio in Tampa, uh, in Florida and the, this lady just makes the most amazing cutters um, so, um, and you can buy them anywhere in the world, she does it online um, and it's uh, Sugar Art Studio and she makes the veiners and the cutters and she makes them all herself. So uh, she, she, she basically works out how to make the flower, she then makes the cutter and the veiner to go along with it. So they're great and they're fantastic. So we're gonna use some of them. Now what I liked when I was in, in her place was this cutter here. I don't know if you can see that, but I just thought it was so lovely, really, really nice. So my idea is for the top tier is to use this bit in gold leaf or silver leaf or just a metallic around the, the, the top, which is really nice, just to go around the top edge. So this part of the cake here is going to have that sort of design there. Okay, so the bottom tier is going to have the cake lace, metallics. The middle tier is going to be the uh, stencil. And then the top tier is going to have this cutter, uh, sort of giving it a sort of lip, like a little ribbon around the bottom of the cake. So once that's all done, that's all good. Uh, I then want to go on to making the flowers. So I got our garden rose. So I've got a garden rose leaf cutter and veiner. So we're going to make two big flowers, big, big, big garden flowers um, for that. 
um, and incorporating Stephen's new Naked Leaves. Uh, I've made some up already, which, which is going to be the first lesson. And you can see here, they're just really, really cool. Just, I just really like. And once these have dried, um, we then wire them up separately run at the same time because they're quite fragile. Um, so that's why I've pre-made these first. And I just wanted a little bit of movement. So these will be made from gum paste. They're still a little bit soft. Um, so that's going to be the first lesson that we do today. Okay, so if I just pop this to one side. Now, oh, also, sorry, I forgot about that, is the cake. <laughs> we can't forget about the cake. Um, so I want it to be an eight inch round, a six inch round, and a four inch round, okay? So I've got the cake here. Um, so I've got this one here. Now I'm going to cut this to a round because it's a, a square. I ordered the wrong uh, uh, cake. So I'm going to cut a round out of this one. Uh, and I've got some spare cake through the back for the top tier. So it's going to be a four inch uh, top tier. So I'm just going to cut these, level them, and uh, ganache them. And I'm going to ice them all in an ivory colour. Okay, a very light white ivory sort of colour for all of them. And they're all going to be ganached. Okay, just, just, just standard ganaching. Um, there's going to be a card underneath, underneath each one. Just so when I'm stacking it, you can stack it. But there's loads of tutorials on the website on how to stack cakes, so not to worry about that. Okay, so I just pop that out of the way. So that's so you can do that on your own time. Okay, so what I want to do first of all is make these little leaves. So, uh, so I've got some flour paste. So I'm just using Squire's Kitchen flour paste. Just to pull some out. Okay, uh, and all I want to do is just soften it up and roll it out. Now these naked leaves. Um, if you look at Stephen's, uh, the nice thing about Stephen's brochure is he spends a lot of time making lots of different things. So it shows you what, what different cake designs and ideas, and he gives you a, a complete step by step and how to actually use the cutter, which is really, really good. And again, more floral designs on the back and how to incorporate leaves. That one's really nice there as well. So that's the nice thing about Stephen's cutters. It goes into a lot of detail on how to use them. So quite often you can buy a cutter and you've absolutely got no idea how to use it. Um, so, we've changed the position of the camera, so I keep on looking there, and I should be looking there, just in case you're wondering where my eyes are going. Hopefully the, the camera's mainly on my hands, but uh, if you see my, my eyes wandering, it's because I've, I've been so used to the, a different position. Okay, so we've rolled out the flour paste nice and thin. I do have a pass machine next to me, but I've just rolled it out by hand. And I'm going to use this little rose leaf one. Now the first thing I want to do is just get a little bit of Trex, so vegetable fat. Just get your finger. Okay, and I would just want to give it a little grease just over the, it doesn't take much at all. There we go. Okay, and I've rolled it out to about just under one millimeter in thickness, so really thin. Pop it on top, get your smoother, press down, and that just attaches it to the cutter. So I find if you go straight on with the rolling pin, sometimes the, the, the flour paste moves. And then just go back and forward lengthways and just cut out the the leaf. There we go. So you can see it just released straight away there. Oops. Apart from that bit there. Okay. Oops. He says, now I've put too much fat on there and it popped out too easily. There we go. Okay. So once that's on, just get your rolling pin if, th if that happens and just flatten that down. So we know it's going to pop out easy because it was about to come out itself. Now what, because it's a naked leaf, we need to take away the biddly bits. So if you get the, um, what's it called? The scribing tool, scriber, the little pin, and all I want to do is the little inserts, the, the me middly bits, just take them out, and you can see it cuts really, really well. Okay. Oh yeah, nice and easy. Okay, so once you've got them out, the very, very end bit, just pop the scriber in. Attach onto it. Now, sorry, if you want to go and take the rough edges away, just use your, th your finger and just give that a rub. Now, you can't get all of them away, but I'm not going to be too worried as long as it looks relatively clean. And then just open up and just release like so. And you can see there, you've got your leaf. Okay. Now, if you do get any little rough edges on the outside, just get your knife and just... Uh, Trim them off. Okay, so you can see how easy that, <laughs> there's, there's the eyes wandering again. You can see how easy it is to get that out there. Now, if you lift the, the leaf up, and all I want to do, you can, you can dry it over like the rolling pin, if you want to get like a nice sort of curved effect, like so. Um, but you can see here, all I've used is the sponge that's got all the little dimples on it, like so. And all I'm doing is just laying it on there and just trying to create a nice shape, like so. 
Okay, so once that's happened and you've done that and you've made all your, your leaves, now I've made loads up there. Um, I've made probably too many, but I just wanted to have a nice selection just because they are quite delicate in case any of them break uh, when we're, when we're uh, putting the, the colour onto them. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to get a 24 gauge wire and that's of recommendation of Mr. Stephen Benson. Um, and I want to cut a third, roughly. Okay. Now, if you get a tiny little bit of the the, uh, the paste, okay, and then just feed it over the top, and all we want to do is stretch that down over the wire, so it's nice and thin. Now you can see I didn't use any glue there because it because it's so fresh. It just goes on really easy. Okay, so you can see that's the wire covered. And then all we do is simply get the, the leaf. We want to get some really sticky glue, so I'm using some glue from Sugar Mill. And we just want to wet the wire. And just press down. Oops. Like so. Okay. Oops. Okay, maybe too much glue. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so you can see there on the back, and then once that goes nice and hard, it just looks like it's been wired up like a normal flower or leaf. <laughs> okay, so we want to do up all them, and I just when we come to the end, we can also arrange them behind the leaf, the flower uh, to get the nice effect. The idea is just to put a bit of metallicness on there, so we're going to do a lovely nice sort of white ivory flower with a little bit of a metallic uh, coming from the leaf, just to give it a, a kind of arty sort of a different look. That's, that's the theory in it. Okay, so, uh, so you want to get busy making them. Now I've made three, six, uh, nine. So I've made nine um, leaves. Um, so if you want to make nine, just to make sure we've got plenty. Okay, so when I come back, I'm going to get busy. I'm going to ganache the cakes. I'm going to ice the cakes. So I've got an eight inch round, a six inch round and a four inch round. They're going to be in three separate boards. Now that's at this stand here is a 10 inch round. So I'm going to make sure the board is no bigger than 10 inch round. Okay, for the top here. I might even make it a nine inch. So there's a little bit of a lip. But we'll see. Uh, I think I think we're 10 inch. But anyway, we'll have them all iced separately to start with. When I come back, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to paint the side of the bottom tier. So we're going to add the metallic uh, luster onto the side there. So it's, I call it the Fay, the Fay technique. It's Fay Cahill uh, technique for there. Okay, we're going to do that first. Now the middle tier, I'm going to ice that one. Not, I'm going to make it a little bit deeper. The middle tier, so I'm going to make it a little bit more of a deeper ivory. So to do that, I'm going to have ivory sugar paste and a teddy bear brown sugar paste, the light brown sugar paste. I'm just going to slowly mix in just to get a slightly deeper colour. And the idea is it kind of gives it a slightly golden feel. And then when I go over with the stencil, which will be an ivory, we get a slight contrast and the colour, but not too much. Okay, I just want it to be kind of soft tones. Okay, and then the top tier is going to be iced ivory. Okay, so just a recap. Four inch round, just normal ivory. Middle tier, slightly darker ivory. Bottom tier, uh, plain ivory. Okay, so um, so when I see you, when I come back, uh, the cakes will all be ganached and iced. Hi, my name's Paul Bradford and welcome to Module 8, Wedding Cakes. So this module will take you through all the different stages to design a beautiful wedding cake. From conducting a wedding appointment and how to sketch the drawing of the cake and the importance of drawing the cake. Then taking you from the drawing to designing the cake and making the cake. So in this process, I'm going to show you how to ganache a nice double barrel cake and how to ice it with a sharp edge. How to obviously stack the cake and how to get this beautiful marble wrap style around the side of this middle tier. How to create these beautiful waver paper ruffles. And of course the cherry on the cake on this one is this beautiful big peony flower. So come on, let's get started. Hi.
Hi, welcome back. So now we're going to move on to making the rows. Um, now I've got the cakes iced, they're over there. I did that last night, so they've been sat for, uh, for a whole night and they've firmed up. We've got nice, nice sort of sharpish edges. And I went for, as I say, I went for the darker cream in the middle and the, the other two tiers, uh, the lighter cream at the bottom and the top tier. So they're just over there just uh, chilling out. Uh, so this morning I came in, first thing, full of the the spring of life, uh, and it's, it's springtime just now. I thought, you know, I'm gonna make some lovely garden noses. And uh, I got these, as I said, I got these lovely cutters from America. And I tried to wire them up, but I thought I would do a nice big wire draw so, so it opens up. And I made about 16 petals. And uh, with me being not um, like things to do things fast, uh, they, they all started to fall off. I thought, no, I can't do this. I'm not going to show you how to do it. And it starts to fall off as well. So, so I've been trying to make work out how to make a really nice, easy garden type rose that's going to look really nice on this cake. And this is what I've come up with. Um, so, uh, so what I've made is uh, I've got a few different steps. I'm going to show you how to do all the steps. But basically, we're going to go from the bud up, up, and to finish off with this lovely big open uh, rose that we have here. Um, so, uh, so I don't know if you can see that in the camera. I'll just sort of hold it over there, so you can see that it's lovely and just nice and juicy and, and big. Okay, so that's what I'm going to show you how to make next. All right. Okay, so if we move this over to here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make our cone. So if we get the uh, the smallest cutter and you can see that it's just slightly over the halfway point so that's what we're looking for so it's a nice nice big so maybe that's almost actually too big so just try and make it roughly half the size of the smallest cutter okay then you want to make them and just make loads of them up and leave them to dry okay so they go nice and nice and hard now I forgot to put the hook on these last night so you should really put on a hook so that they actually bend over. Um, just use your tweezers uh, and just bend the wire so it's, you get a, a, a kind of open, like a walking stick. And then push them in with some glue and leave them to sit overnight. And make loads of them up. If you're going to start making noses, make loads of cones up just so that you can um, have them just to hand so you can make lots of noses. Okay, so uh, so I've got some flour paste. Now I'm using Squire's Kitchen uh, white flour paste, but you can use any flour paste or gum, gum paste. Uh, and all I want to do is just soften it up I've got a little bit of white uh, vegetable fat here, so just to make it easy to, to roll out, uh, and then just soften that down and roll it. So, what we're doing for this rose, so you need to get your, your, your piece of paper ready um, to write down the, the quantities. So we're going to make four small ones to start with. And that's the nice thing about making flowers, just experiment and play with it and just look at, I was, I was just looking at lots of roses and I was just trying to get an idea of how I wanted the rose to look. Um, rather than sort of keep on looking at cake books, etc., because they're all different. If you just look at a rose, I mean, you actually see a bunch of roses together. Um, in fact, do you know what? Where's my, yeah, let's just see. So I was at my mum's today, yesterday, last night, and she's bought some flowers. I just took a picture of them because I thought they were really nice. But that's the kind of thing that you want to do. I mean, you see the roses, they look, they look really nice, but they look really untidy. So I don't know if you're able to see that. So it was the iris and the rose. And when I was looking at the rose, look, look how actually untidy. I don't know if you're going to get that in the camera. Uh, they're actually quite messy, but collectively together. Oh, oh, I ran out of battery. Did you get it? Yes, you did. <laughs> um, collectively together, they look really nice. So, uh, so, you know, try and make it look as natural as you can. There we go. The reason why the phone's ran out of battery because I've been listening to music all morning to get me in the mood. Okay, so there we are, nice and thin. Okay, we've got our little sponge here. So we're going to go for the smallest one. And just cut that out. And then we just want to have four of these. Okay, lovely. So just place them on the sponge. I should have had a blue one so you can see what I was doing. Okay, so place on the sponge and get the ball tool. And all I want to do is just soften that edge, just lightly, just to make it thin and nice and delicate. Okay, so just give that a soften. There we are. And then once we've softened that edge, we just want to pop it into the, the veiner. Okay, so open the veiner up, place it in. And then give it a good old press, quite hard. And then maybe just use your knife just to, to pop that out. And you can see the lovely veins. I don't know if Greg will be able to pick that up. But you get a really nice vein from it. Okay. There we are. OK, 
Okay, so just turn like that. Now, if you're doing a production line, then you want to get a little system going. going. So you can make all these ones first, put them in a little bag, make the next one, put them in a bag, rather than just make one at a time, which takes ages. Okay, there we are. Okay, so once you've got them, we want to place them back on the sponge. And all we want to do is just use the small end of the ball tool, just to give them a slight throw. Just not too much. And that's enough there. Okay, so just to take it from the flat and bring it back up. I'm using the small part because I don't want to lose those, those lovely veins that we've created. So I'm just really just bringing it back to life because it's already thin anyway. You can see how easily it pops back up like so. Okay, so then just turn them upside down. There we go, get your glue. Okay, and then just a little triangle. Like so. Okay, now get your cone. Oh, and maybe just pop a little bit of glue in the cone as well. There we are. Okay, now at an angle, bring this over. So round this way, just change the angle to that angle and just press that down up so it goes round. And you want to pinch that in there and then round, round, round and down. Now you'll find that that little flap, this little bit here flaps opened. So uh, if that happens, a little bit of glue just to close that off. There we are. Okay, so that's the sort of rosebud made. Okay, now these three chappies here, all we want to do is over the first join, pop it on a little bit higher up, wrap it round, just like how I make the chocolate roses. And then just the same thing again, round. And then this one sits on top of this one. And then it goes round as well. There we go. Okay, and there we are. So that's the middle of the, the, the rows. So that's the, the next size up. Now, once that's on there, just you want to make all these up at the same time, just so they're drying, because you don't want to be too soft. Okay, so I'm going to pop this one to one side, let that dry off. There we go. And then here's one I made earlier. Okay, so it's a little bit harder. Okay, so it was made a little while ago. Okay, so once we've got that one on, Pop that down, and now what I want to do is want to cut out five of the medium size. So five of these ones. Okay. Hopefully, I'm going to get them out of this. One, two, three, four. Perfect. Five. Now, if you're working slow, remember to to cover your paste up because it dries very very quickly. So just get a, a little food bags like these and just pop them in there just to stop them, the petals from drying out. Okay, and then we want to do the exact same process again. So back and forward, and you can start to stretch them, just to make them a little bit bigger, and just want to make them thin, but don't make it too frilled, because it's still to go in the veiner. Okay, and just do the same thing again. There we are. Okay, so we'll just ball round. It's really frustrating this morning when I was making the roses. I was such, I was such a buzz, and I thought it was going to be so nice and getting the wires, um, and then it just didn't seem to work. It was just too fiddly for me. And I thought, I just don't want to. Be. If I had a cake shop, the last thing I would do is spend hours and hours on one rose. So we want to make them, make them beautiful, but fast, 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 fast. Okay, so get the veiner. Same thing again. If we can, if we can get them, just pop it in, and then just remember that body weight right on there. Okay, and then just pop that out there. Now, what's quite nice because you almost want them to slightly dry because it gives it more shape. So don't cover these up; just let them air dry a little bit, which can make them a, bit, a little bit stiffer. So it gives the rose a bit more of a body. Okay, there we are. Now, the heavens have opened up here in Scotland, funnily enough, it's raining once again. So it's put a bit of a dampener, a dampener, <laughs> a bit of a dampness in the air. Um, so it just think, means things are going to take a little bit longer to dry. Hence the reason why I made different stages, just to, to sort of speed things up a bit. So just bear that in mind if your uh, summer's going to be a lot of rain, the flowers will take longer to dry. Okay, so just the same thing again, just round and just soften off the edges there. 
We're down at the, the Cake International. It was the, the Lon London show at the weekend there. Um, and uh, some of the flowers are just unbelievably amazing. So if you ever get a chance to come to the UK, if you're a, if you're a, if you're a sugar, a cake addict, make sure you come to the UK when there's a cake show on. So you can go, for, even just for one day, you're, it'll blow your mind. And some of these people are spending one day just on one rose to win, win a gold medal, but it's worth it to see it. But commercially, uh, you couldn't charge that sort of price. Okay, so the same thing again. So we just want to turn these over. Now, if you want to get a lot, even a lot more shape, leave, leave them for even longer. So they start to, so they're a little bit harder. So, so you can slightly bend them a little bit easier on the, on the, the rose. So again, just get your glue and then just pop that on there. Like so. Now you want to give this t this glue time to, to go a little bit tacky um, before you pop it on because they could slide. Uh, now I've not got time for that, so what I'm going to do is just get a little bit of the, the kitchen roll and just take off the excess just to hopefully speed up the, the tacky time. Okay, right, okay, so where's that? Is this the hard one here? Yes, it is. Okay, so lift it up, and then the same thing again. So you can start over any of the join. So a little bit higher up, and we're just going a little bit on there, pressing it on, and then just hold that in your hand, open it back up, and we want to tuck in the next one, almost halfway around. Okay, in fact, further in than that, two thirds around, press it on, and then pull back. Okay, and there, and then round. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so once that's on, give it a good press. Make sure they're on. Okay, and then once that's on there, we can then go back, and we can start to open up. And just we're just looking for to get that nice body uh, of the rose and get a nice shape. Give it a little, just give it a little pinch. Now you can see that's very floppy, that one. So what we're gonna do is, oh, I've got rid of it, two seconds. If you feel that it's just too floppy, just get your little air dryer, turn the rose upside down, and just pop it on the, the dryer, just to give it time to, to firm up. Okay, so as that's starting to film up, uh, firm up, uh, we can then turn it back over. We don't want to leave it upside down to dry completely like that because it will just close, okay, just until it dries and then we can turn it over and then stretch the petals back open again. Okay, so I'd say maybe five minutes maximum for that. Okay, so we'll just put that over there and now we're going to fast forward to the last bit. Okay, so for this bit, um, I'm actually not going to use, I, so I use this petal here, uh, this cutter, the medium sized cutter and then I've bypassed it. This is the one that I wired up that I didn't like, okay? And it was too small. So I've bypassed this one. And believe it or not, I've just made my own cutter, as a, you know I do on the website. Uh, so this started life as a lily cutter. And then, it used, then I used it as I'm making a, a poinsettia at Christmas last year. And now I've turned it into a giant rose cutter as well, okay? So it's, it does ruin your cutters, but it, does, it doesn't ruin your, your uh, back pocket when you're buying cutters all the time. Okay, so uh, there we are. So that's what we've done there. So you can see I've already rolled out three there, so we've only got a few more to, to roll out. So uh, how many did I put in this one? One, two, three, four, five. Six. Yeah, so there's only six on there, so I've only got three, three more to roll out, uh, which might be a struggle, because <laughs> I've only got a wee bit left. I'm sure I'll get three out of this. Okay, so just roll that down. Or maybe not. Let's just see. Oh yeah, we'll be fine. Okay, so. Okay, so pop that on there. Okay, now they're very, very thin because I was trying to get as much out of that one piece. So it's fine for them to air dry. 
And then we just want to try and get one teeny little bit more out of this one. I suppose that's a good way to make sure you've got a nice thin petal. There we go. Great, okay, so the same thing again. So get your ball tool and just want to go around the big one. Now this one's not got the, the frilly edge, but you can see here it, does, it, it, it looks fine. So, uh, so I'm just gonna go around like that. If you want to get a frilly edge, make it more frilly, that's fine. There we are. And then obviously it's not gonna fit exactly in here. So as long as the top part's in, because the bottom parts, no one's gonna see it. Okay, so just pop that in there. Press down. There we go. Beautiful. Look at that. Lovely veins. Okay. And then this one here. Oh, the bone's cracking there. Right. That's that done. Pop that back on the sponge and then the same thing. Just go round and we just want to soften that edge. There we go. Okay, and all we want to do is just place them on the, the sponge just to dry in different shapes. But only for, to dry for a little while. So again, five minutes. Depends where you are. If it's raining outside, it's going to take longer to dry because it's a bit more sticky in here, wet in here, damp in here. Okay. There we are. Now, if I look, pick these up, these were made about half an hour ago. They've still got a bit of movement about them, okay? So, now we need to make a little invention, a little cup holder to make the, the um, former. So, if we get a, a cup cupboard, good old tin foil again. I like using tin foil. Okay, so fold it over and then like so. And all I want to do is just use your fist and just trying to start to press it round to create your, your former. Okay, once you've got that, like so, pop it in the tin foil, push it in a little bit further and then bend that back. Like so. Okay, and then just make a little hole in the middle. Oops, big hole. <laughs> uh, a little hole in the middle for the rose to go down. Now that's going to be too long, so you can either bend the wire back. Uh, we don't need the, I don't need them to be long actually, so I'm just going to make them smaller. And then that just pops in there uh, like so. Okay, now I might say, I forgot to mention that the wire I've used there was an 18 inch gauge, 18 inch, an 18 gauge, sorry not 18 inch, 18 gauge uh, white wire that I used for the cones uh, and probably a third of the length, they were half and half but uh, a third, a third long would be absolutely perfect for that. Okay, so let's pop this rose together. Okay, so just pop them in here. Now these are probably a bit on the soft side but be all fine. So you probably notice I've got some sponge here, just like I've got on there. Uh, so uh, all I want to do is get a little bit of sponge and cut these bits up into small pieces. Now I can't remember if I mentioned this, but uh, I, I've actually got this idea from a lovely gentleman in America called Nicholas Lodge, and that's what he uses to make his roses. He uses the foam formers to make it, and it's such a simple technique. Um, and it just helps to get the rose to give it a nice body. And that's what we've done there. Okay, so a little bit of glue again. I don't know if you can hear that rain, but it's, it's a, today's, I think, the 2nd or 3rd of April. And so the April showers is definitely happening just now. <laughs> okay, so turn it around like so. Okay, and it's just how I do the peony, very, very similar. I'll put the firm ones on first. So uh, so just the, the petal here, and you want to go right at the bottom and just press that on. Okay. Now make sure you go the same way as what the rose put, so I'm not going to go around that way, uh, or am I going around that way? Oh, I've done that one the other way around. Let's just see. Oh no, 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 that's fine. So I'm just talking to myself. Um, okay, so this one wants to go halfway over. So halfway and just press that down. 
Just make sure you press this bit because that's where it's going to seal it on. Turn it round. Okay, again, halfway. Turn round. Turn round. Again, halfway. Okay, and then it just leaves just enough for this last one to go in. I'm just going to get a little wobble. Open that up, tuck it in, and that one then wants to go round and over the top of the other one. Now I need to just pull that down a bit, it's too high up. Make sure all these bits look the same height. Okay, now that doesn't feel right, something doesn't, oh, wrong way around. That one goes that way, and that one goes underneath. That's better. There we go. Okay. Okay, so that's that on there. Now it's really difficult to see how it looks from above. So we've just got to just go with it. Okay, it's very sticky. Okay, so we then we'll get pieces of foam and we want to open up and just tuck the foam underneath. Like so. Now some of them will fall out but you can just pop them back in again. Oops, you can tell there's some of the ones that are that's a, a firmer one so just put a bigger bit in, put a smaller bit in, so just change the foam to whatever you want size-wise. Okay, okay, good. So if we get the, the foil, and pop that over the top, like so, and then just very carefully, just spin it over. Now you can see some of the, the foam fell out, but as long as we kept the rough shape of the rose, there we are. Okay, so once we've got that on there, just give it a little press around, and we just want to have a play around with the petals. Nice. There we are. Good, so you can see there's a wee bit of shape needed there. Okay, so those those ones that I made up here are a little bit on the firm side, so they're not wanting to play. So it is better if they're actually soft, softer. I'm just going to try and change the shape of the older ones. Just, there we go. That's fine. And there we are. So there we go. So a lovely big garden rose for the cake. So obviously we're going to leave these to dry um, and we've got the leaves that are made up yesterday so they're just going to come out the back like so, it's going to be really nice. Good, okay, so we're going to have a tidy up and then we come back we're going to move on to using the uh, decorating the bottom tier of the cake. So that's doing the cake lace. So I've got the oven on already. So I've got it on about six de degrees um, on a fan oven, just the very lowest temperature you have. So you can see it's actually not even near the first, the first temperature is 75, but I've got it up about um, 60. Okay, so I'm going to tidy up and we'll come back and we'll do some painting and some cake lace. Okay, so now we're going to move on to adding the metallic to the cake. So uh, just painting around the sides here. We've done that a few times now on the, on the tutorials. So what I've got here is a uh, pearl ivory uh, from Sugar Flare. So I'm going to pop that in first of all. And then I've got some of the topaz from Squire's Kitchen, which has just got a really nice uh, tone about it. So I'm going to make a little mega mix. Just pop some of that in. There we go. That's fine. And then we've got some 96% alcohol. Okay. So we just want to pour them in. Okay. And you see straight away we've got a fabulous colour that's just appeared there. So just give that a little mix round. That's nice. And I probably want it to be a little bit more champagne colour. So I've got a little bit of champagne here, some, some dust. So I just want to pop some of the dusts in. Just to slightly change the tone a little bit. Okay. 
a little bit more of this. Okay. That's good. I'm going to add a little bit more of the Squire's Kitchen just to thicken it up a little bit there. Make sure I've got plenty. There we are. That's good. Okay, so um, so all I want to do is just get the, the colour and we just want to go around the side of the cake and see that lovely colour there and just go around and just painting that on. So remember it dries quite fast. Okay, and then once you've got that on, you're happy about it, just get your dry brush and then we just want to go round and just creating that lovely metallic. Just keep going until it dries out. Okay, let's just stand back and have a little look. Okay, so I think we could do with Maybe a little bit more. I think it needs to be a little bit thicker. Oops. Okay, so I think we want a bit more of a gold to now, two seconds. My gold's here. Okay, so I'm going to pop in a little bit of the royal gold. Just to sort of deepen it down a little bit, the colour. That's from Sugar Flare. Oh yeah, that looks nice. Yep. Okay, so that will be dry because it dries very quickly. Okay, so let's just add that colour. Oh yeah, you can see the difference there straight away. Maybe nice. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, and then just the brush and just keep spinning that round. And just with the big bristles, we get a really nice texture on there as well. Okay, on again. You can just get a lovely metallic when you see the light hitting off it. Which is nice. Okay, so that's nice. So it's definitely got a nicer tone there, and you see the metallic starting to shine off the cake there. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to put another couple of coats on off camera. There's no point in doing it to camera until we get that nice metallic finish uh, and I'm going to then get the cake lace and put the cake lace on. Hi, my name's Paul Bradford and welcome to Module 7 Novelty Cakes. So the first thing we learn to make on this module is the classic 3D teddy bear. So I'm going to take you through all the different stages. The first one is how to create this beautiful marbled iced board. Then we take you through how to carve a cake that's unusual shaped, how to ganache and ice an unusual shaped cake, and then how to get this beautiful piped buttercream fur. Okay, then the next cake we're going to learn on this module is the dragon cake. So on this one, I'm going to teach you how to carve this really nice little mountain shape. Then of course you're going to have to ganache it, but there's a little secret with the ganache with this one, which you'll learn when you're in there. And then also I'm going to do a marble effect, a green marble, to help with that stone effect. We're going to create stones around the bottom of the mountain, and then we're going to airbrush that one. So this is going to learn how to do some little basic airbrushing and shading. And the cherry on the cake, of course, is this beautiful dragon. I'm going to take you through all the different stages using modelling paste to create your very own 3D dragon. 
And then finally, we're going to then move on to making a 3D handbag. So this is one of the classic cakes, and of course it's a, it's a bread and butter for anyone's cake portfolio, is how to make a handbag cake. So on this, this lesson, we're going to learn how to carve quite a simple shape, but how to get a really sharp finish. It's very important with handbags to get a sharp finish. And then we're going to panel the cake, which is a little bit different from these two. We're going to panel, again, helping to get a nice clean, sharp finish. And then we finish off with these beautiful polka dots, the, the handle, the flap, and all the magical finishing touches. So as you can see, in module seven, you're going to learn three completely different cake designs. But these cake designs are going to take you to the next level. So come on, let's get started. Hi, right, welcome back. Uh, so that's uh, four coats I've put on there. Uh, hopefully you can see the light there. We're getting a bit of a, a nice metallic finish to it. It looks really nice. And it's just nice seeing the plane and then the color on the side there. So we're gonna put some ivy around the bottom. Before we do that, uh, I've already started with the cake lace uh, and I've got one piece in there already. So it's just been in there for seven minutes. So if I just bring this out across here. So I'm using the pearlized, um, uh, cake lace and uh, bring it out just to let it cool down a tiny little bit Then when I look at it, it kind of shrinks back and that's why I like to put two coats in Especially here. I can see it's really shrunk back there. Okay, so all I want to do is just get some more of the lace and just do it again Okay I like to use the cranked palette knife and then take it off with the cake lace knife. There we go. And you can see that it just fills in all the, the gaps. It just makes it extra strong. Um, I, I get a few people asking me that the cake lace never works. It always kind of breaks. I think just the two coat method is the best for me. Okay, so just get the knife. And um, we just want to scrape off the excess. Just pop it in there. Okay, so this is an eight inch round. So unfortunately, I think we might need three of these to go around. Two would be good, but I think it's three. Okay, so I just lift it back up, pop it in the oven. and then we just want to put that on for another seven minutes. Okay, so while that's on there, let's get the board iced. Now, as you'll know, if you watch my tutorials for a while, I do not like transferring cakes. So we're just gonna do the, the old fashioned wrap it round the board, which is quite awkward, but because uh, we've got that lovely metallic on there, we don't want to damage the, the metallic paint by trying to lift it and Da -de -da -de -da. Okay, so I've got some ivory sugar paste. Let's just dust the table. The paper's there for, for me to put the... Uh, so the paper's there just so we can use the cake lace. So it's just somewhere to, to sit on while it's being ready to use. Okay, so we just want to roll this out. It needs to be quite long. Let's go all the way around the board. Okay, that should be fine. One last roll, just to get it nice and even. Okay, and just a little roll that way. Okay, so get the glue, and we just want to go around with the glue, because there's, there's not much of an edge on this. So it's just a small cover. Get your knife and then just cut one strip. Okay, now we can see the size, it's not that big. So, okay, 
keep that just in case we need a backup. That actually still feels a little bit on the thick side, but the ribbon's going to hide it, so we're fine. Now there's a little mark that I noticed. Some of the, the gold has had a little bit of red in it, and it's marked the top of the cake, so that's now officially the back of the cake. Okay, so I just want to place that on there. And just keep turning it around, just keep giving it a little rub to make sure it's sticking down. And the cake list is going to be the bottom here, so you're not really going to see that join, but it does give a nice finish anyway. There we go, so around there, and I would just want to neaten that up, so I'm going to cut over the two of them, just got to get a nice cut edge and then a little bit of glue in there just to, to seal that down. There we go. Just try and blend that away. There we go. Okay, so that's nice. And then you can get your uh, little knife and just underneath, maybe the big knife, not a little knife. And just carefully, no, make sure it's definitely stuck down right now. Okay, now what I'm going to do, because it's going to come off. Is I'm just going to use this and just going to press it. Oops. Press it off. Because it's going to pull it off there, which is not what I want. Okay, so, and this just gives it a rounded edge at the same time. Okay. Okay, and you can see there we just get a nice, nice-ish. <laughs> on there. Let's see if I can use the knife now. Oh, there, there we go. It's these, uh, there we go. Who would have thought cutting a board is going to take on my skill level? <laughs> Okay, so once that's on there, we just want to go round. You can use that or you can use the smoother, and, uh, the scraper, and just go round and just give that a nice smooth finish. Okay. How long has that oven got to go? It must be almost time to start beeping. So you can see you get a nice contrast. So we've got the, the ivory board, and then we've got the ivory top and then the gold metallic in the middle which looks really nice, quite elegant. Okay, so just mix that up. Okay. Pop that to the side and then hopefully we can take this cake lace out. Okay, so just give it a little wipe. There we go. Perfect timing. And I can hear it's quite rough. A lot of ice and sugar on there. Okay. Okay, so let's get this cake base out. My goodness, that was perfect timing. Okay. 
Okay, so I just want to give it a couple of seconds just to to cool down. Just to let it, so that it'll almost let the air dry a little bit before we take it out now, actually. Maybe it's not quite ready. No, nope, I think it could do another couple of minutes actually. So I'm going to pop it back in the oven for another couple of minutes and then we'll come back. It's just, normally it pops out really easily, but it's still a bit sticky. So another couple of minutes and then we'll bring it out. Okay, welcome back. Um, so now we're going to move on to the cake lace. That's the cake lace cut out of the oven um, about 100 times. I have a really bad day of cake lace, okay? Uh, I was hoping to have this whole project finished by lunchtime. It's now almost three o'clock and I'm still doing the cake lace. So sometimes you have a really bad day and today was one of them. So um, what happened was uh, it would come out, it was too soft, it, come out, it was too brittle um, and everything in between pretty much. So I've, never, I've not been able to get a balance at all today. So I've managed to salvage one relatively nice piece. This bit's got bits that I've left on it, just because it was about the tenth time given it a shot. You can see these ones here. Um, they've actually dried now, so it could just be that, it's, as I say, it's been heavy rain, and I think it's got something to do with the, the moisture, uh, the humidity maybe, the, in the room. Um, so it's the first time that's happened. Um, so um, so I, I, re I revised, um, had another look, at how this, uh, some reviews on Facebook, etc., on, online. And um, a lot of people are saying that using the, this is the pearl one I've used, so it's the pre, pre-made, you don't have to make the mix up, it just comes out the tub. Uh, sometimes it is better to just leave it to, to air dry for three hours, but that's not practical sometimes when you're making cakes. So what, the, the only way that I could get it to really work was, uh, I washed it, so I took up, I gave this a good wash, chucked this in the, the, the oven to dry, completely dry. I then put the, the um, the uh, cake lace on, popped it in the oven for 10 minutes, brought it out, put a second layer on, popped it back in the oven for another 10 minutes, and it came out really good. But I left it out to, to cool down for about half an hour, had some lunch, and then it, it popped out really good. This one here, um, again, it was two or three attempts before I could get that after this one. Uh, I had to do the same thing again and just leave it, um, even that was even with the oven. But I think it's got something to do with the humidity. There's a lot of rain outside, so I think that's had to do with it. Um, but we're there now, and uh, we've got, I think we've got just enough to go around the cake. I kept these bits because if I do, if I'm short, I'm just going to pull bits off there to stick on at the back there to finish it off because I ain't making another one. <laughs> uh, now this can just go in the dishwasher or you can just pop it in the, the sink. So I just pop that in the sink. Now, um, so the next, the next stage is uh, applying it to the cake uh, and making sure it looks nice on the, the cake. Um, so I'm going to put the nice bit on first. Now I do have a back to this cake because it was that little bit where the mark was. Oh yeah, the marks there. So there's a little red mark there, just with the food colour in there. So, so I want that. To, um, that that's the, definitely the back of the cake. So I turn that there. So I want to lift this up very, very carefully. So if it breaks, I really will have an average breakdown. And uh, we want to just place that on, which looks. It's worth all the effort because it looks really, really nice um, to go on the cake there. Um, now, what we want to do here is pop just a little bit of glue on, really just very quickly and get it on and once it's on we can then go back and then fix it. So I've got some edible glue uh, there, okay. And all I want to do is don't put a lot on, just because if, if you if you really soak it, it what happens is it just dissolves um, and then we'll be crying again uh, when it doesn't work. So just enough to make it a little bit tacky so that I didn't really clean that that well that time. So it's maybe a bit too much. Okay. I've got to be quick because this is going to go start going, it's going wet. Okay, and then I just want to just pick that up. Over to the cake. Don't know if I put enough glue on there, but we'll soon find out. Yep, it's, it's definitely got the tackiness, so it's starting to stick on there. Okay, so where it's not staying on there, what I'm going to do is just get the brush. Okay, and just put some in the back. Just to stick that on. OK, 
Okay, so we just want to go around. You can see that it's just going on nice. And there. Same thing, so just to get it on there. Whoops, watch not, please don't break it. I'd make a good tutorial, have Paul having a, a nervous breakdown while making making a wedding cake. You'll definitely get a lot of hits on YouTube, I think. There we are. One of those days. Sometimes the, the stuff that should be easy aren't, and that's been one of those days for me today. But it's worth it. Please don't be put off. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, so you can see there that's on there and it looks, looks really, really nice. Um, so I need to put up on the next piece. So again, just turn it around. Um, so that bit's going to go on there. Yeah. Okay, now you see it's a little bit softer there. So um, I need to be careful. So I think what we'll do is I don't want to put any weight, probably because it's got the excess, um, the excess on it. So I'm just going to, whoops, that was close. I mean, actually, maybe it's a quicker way of getting the, the glue on. There we go, I'm just gonna get this on straight away. Okay, so lift it up. Okay, just get that on to the edge there. there we go. Oops. Okay, and round we go. Okay, this bit but the interior's been a bit naughty. It's trying to fall off. Now, I don't know, Sunday's always looking after me, but that just came round there no more. Um, so that's good. So thank you very much, whoever's helped me out there. There we go. My goodness. Now we're doing stenciling next. <laughs> and that can be quite problematic as well. Um, but hopefully we can't have too many problems in the one day. Okay, so uh, you get the idea. You can see there, it's just a little bit loose. And all I'm doing is just popping the glue on the back and then just pressing it on, like so. Now, this little bit here fell off. There's a wee tiny bit there that's missing, so uh, it just fell off when I was uh, removing it from the, the the mat. So there we go, another bit's came off. So that, that's what was happening. It, was, it seemed to be brittle and really soft at the same time. Uh, so some parts were really brittle. So what we want to do is just get the glue on. Get that stuck down. And then what we can do is just pop some glue up here. And just hopefully that will just attach itself back on. And you'll never know. There we go. Like that. Okay, so you can see there. And then just get the wee tiny bit. That should be at the top there. So I'm going to put a little, a little bit of glue on the back of that. Just to make it really sticky. Okay, so, oh, so we're back with that. So you can see there, we've obviously got that little bit of a join there. Just press it down. I mean, there's nothing we can do about that. Um, but you can see there from this bit here, it looks really nice. Okay, so I'm just going to fix that. There's a few bits of sticking out there. Uh, I'm just going to get a pair of scissors and trim off this last little bit here. And that's the back of the cake. And then when we come back, that'll be all done. And then we're going to move on to making the stencil for the middle tier. Hi, welcome back. So now we're going to move on to the middle tier of the cake. So you can see here, um, so I've got this colour using just ivory sugar paste, a little bit teddy bear brown mixed in. Not that much at all, and just keep mixing until you get this nice uh, deep cream, sort of almost beige colour, which is what I've got here. Um, for the royal icing, I made that up just before we came on. And uh, what I've got here, I, I was trying to make something that was 
similar tones to that. So just a slightly, slightly different a tone out, just so you can see it in no more. Okay, so that's just Royal Icing mixed with a little bit of chestnut soft beige from Squire's Kitchen. So any brownie tones uh, you want to use for that. Okay, so that's that's the Royal Icing and it's a stiff peak consistency. And, and I, the, I brought it to stiff peak then I made it a little bit softer again, just so that it glides better. And I might just pop it on the table and make it a little bit softer again, just by adding a little water, just so when we scrape it off, we get a nice, a nice finish from the stencil. Now, if you've not used a stencil before, uh, what I've got here is medical tape. Where's the tape gone? Oh, I've lost the tape. Is on this here? Oh, there it is, sir. <laughs> so the stuff you get in a first aid kit from the, from the doctors, uh, from the pharmacy. Uh, medical tape, obviously it's, it means it's uh, food safe, okay, because it's going on the skin. Uh, and all there's I've cut a little slit, that's what they recommend. Cut a little slit so you can actually put the medical tape inside on both sides. And then the idea is we can wrap this around the cake. It doesn't matter if this touches the cake because it's non-toxic. It's, it's, it's completely fine for to touch uh, on the food. Um, and it keeps it in place where we're using the stencil. That's the, that's the theory. Now this is very sticky medical tape. Um, so you do have to watch that the sticky side doesn't really touch the cake because I think it probably would take the icing off. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unravel this bit and what we want to do is take the design, which way do I prefer it? I think that way, okay. And um, we want to place it around the cake. Okay. Like so. Now just make sure it's really close to the cake. Okay, just really getting that on there. Okay. Now at the back here, what we want to do is cross these bits over, hold it really tight. I'm just going to sell tape that on there like so, okay? And I want to double reinforce it over to this side. Now with larger cakes, that's why you've got the strap. So you can actually just sell tape it here if it's a wider cake, okay? Now what I'm going to do is just pop a little bit on the bottom, take a risk that it's not going to rip the sugar paste off. Now to make it le less sticky, I'm just going to take some of the glue off. And I'm just going to pop it on there to hold this bit down here. And likewise on the other side there. Okay. There we are. Okay, now I need to just boost the height up there because these little, in fact, I'm going to take it off there. Because that's probably not good. I'm just going to pop it on this one. Okay, and that's just came off there, so just. Okay, and then we just want to get the Royal Ice in. Now I just want to check the consistency. I just want to make it a little bit softer. So I'm going to pop the palette knife in, just the water that goes on the palette knife, and just use that to slightly thin it down a little bit. Just want to get a nice glide. Yeah. There we go. So it's a little bit more medium consistency. Now it's going to be hard for me to uh, pop this on to camera, but I'll see how I can do it. So all I want to do is just pop it on and paddle back and forward. Now that bit's just pung off, but hopefully it shouldn't give me too much problems. Okay, so I'm quite a bit short, so let's just bring 
Where is the boat? Okay, so just get the consistency right. Okay. Back on. There we go. Okay, I'm just going to add some more down here. There. Right, okay, that's that bit done. So now what I want to do is get the scraper, bring it to the end, and then we want to just scrape off the excess. And then again. And just down the bottom here. More at the top. All right, okay, so that's that bit done. Now the fun part. So we just want to release the, the tape. Uh, put the scissors. Same this side. There we go. And just let it ping off. And hopefully, it looks okay. There we are. Okay, so there we are. Good. Right, so that looks okay. So, what we want to do now is first of all save the Royal Icing. Pop the damp tea towel over so it doesn't dry out. And now we need to just fix, fix it, because it never really goes on perfect every time. So it's quite stressful. You can see I went very quiet there in the concentration mode, which doesn't happen often. Uh, just because you've always got ice decay, can you want to make sure it goes on good? Okay, so what we want to do first of all is always just fix the top. Now, if we get a paintbrush, Okay, and then just look for a sort of medium sized brush. I've got hundreds here, but none. Okay, oh, there we go. That's fine. A little bit of water. And what I want to do is this top part here, if there's any bits that you want to just lift up, just pull them to the top and we can cut them off. Just lift them up. There we go. And then just get your knife. Oops. Okay, and we just want to go around and just trim off the excess just to keep it nice and neat. Always push the knife in the way so you're taking the royal icing away from the cake. Now obviously this has got to dry before we can do the back completely, but that doesn't take long, it does dry very quickly. 
Okay, so that's the top looking a lot neater. So once we've got the top neater, if there's any flaws down the bottom that we're not happy, like there's a little bit of jagginess there. Okay, you can fix that. Now around here, we lost some of the shape. So what we can do is just get the, the, the wet paint brush and we can just go round and just fix and just try and get that definition back. So around here you can definitely see we've lost quite a lot of the definition. But you can just see just using a, da a damp paintbrush just brings it back. Now you could use a scraper and sort of scrape it, but you I think you would just you just kind of highlight it too much. We we'll just want to take the excess off. And if it's not perfect, it's not perfect. Okay, you can see lots of wee jaggy bits there, so I'm just going to press them down. Now that's where I first put the royal icing on. And it would, looks like it's just been a little bit too soft, to be honest. There we go. It's not perfect. That's the, that's the sort of worst bit down there. But I think overall we've got a really nice pattern going on there. Yeah. Okay, so there we go. So I'm going to leave that for about probably about 15 minutes until it dries. And then I'm going to turn it around the back and then we're going to pop the, the stencil onto the back of the cake. Hi, my name's Paul Bradford, and welcome to Module 4, Sugar Flowers. On this module, I'm going to show you how to make these beautiful sugar flowers that are perfect for any wedding cake or celebration cake. First, you're going to learn how to make filler flowers perfect to fill any gap in a sugar flower spray. Next, we're going to move on to how to make a sugar rose. The sugar rose is the classic flower to display in any beautiful wedding cake. Then we're going to move on to making my favourite flower, the Stargazer Lily. Now this lily is beautiful to make, it looks very technical, but it's quite easy. And after that, we're then going to move on to making a beautiful big peony. Now, peonies are so in vogue across the world in sugar craft, you're going to absolutely love this one. And finally, we move on to making the sugar leaves. So these leaves are perfect because no flower is without the nice green foliage behind it and it just really sets off any sugar spray. So as you can see, there's loads to learn in this module. I'm going to show you how to use the cutters and veiners, how to get the tiny little florist wires into the sugar, how to paint and dust your petals, and of course, how to tape them up and make them look amazing. So once you've learned how to make all these beautiful sugar flowers, you'll be one step closer to becoming a Cake Flix master. Okay, so now we're going to move on to top tier while we're waiting for the royal icing to set on the middle tier. So, and the top tier is a nice and easy thing, thank goodness. I shouldn't have said that because I've just jinxed myself. So, uh, I've got this lovely scroll. It's um, from 
Shugrat Studios in Tampa, and it's the, the oh, something scroll, Barco, Bar Baroque, <laughs> Baroque scroll. <laughs> I've just lost the plot today. Anyway, let's let's keep going. Um, so I just thought it was really nice. I saw it hanging up in the wall and I thought I need to have that. It was really, really good. So we're gonna use that. So I've rolled out the flour paste and we just want to uh, cut out this. Make sure it really cuts. Nice. There we go. Excellent, okay, so just go around with your thumb and really, oh yeah, it looks, looks really nice. I want to almost kiss it. Please come out. There we go. Right, I'm going to use a paintbrush just so I'm nice and gentle. And just pop it out. There we go. Come on. Lovely, oh that's nice. I really like that. Okay, now if we get a smoother, because it's, cause it's flour paste, it's gonna dry relatively fast, that's what we want. But we just want to make sure it's flat. Like that, okay. So that's it flat, so we want to cut out, uh, I'm gonna, I think it won't need four. Really just one, two, three, four, I think. Right now, one. Three. Oh. I wonder if we just. Uh, hmm. I've got a ribbon here. Yeah, it's bang on the right size. Let me just measure this. One, two, three, four. Oh no, yeah, four exactly. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, I was starting to. Not believe myself there. Okay, just give it. Go. Okay. Now, the idea is uh, we want to give this a gold, the gold leaf. Now, I've never used gold leaf, it's always just been the silver leaf. No one seems to want the gold, so. Uh, I'm theming this this cake, uh, although I'm making this as a wedding cake, it's for a friend and it's her mum's 60th. Oh, I think. Maybe it's not. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I I'm in my head uh, it's a 60th. <laughs> Maybe it's a 50th. Um, anyway, so, um, but 60 was on my mind, which I was thinking gold. So that's why I went a gold theme. Um, so I thought a good idea to get this the, the gold leaf out. Okay, I'll just not recommend watching the video to the person whose birthday it is. Okay, so, down there. Now it might be easier just to give this a little dip into corn flour, just to release it. Come on. It's funny, this little bit here seems to... Come on. There you come. Okay, that bit got stretched too much there, so. Just gonna just give it a little trim, there we go. Nobody will ever know. Okay, and then just. There. Good. Okay, so that's good. So I'm gonna cut it on our two. I'm gonna do it off camera, because it's taking a little bit long. We just gonna get a little, a little, I'm gonna put some treks on it, just to, to get it cut off. Uh, I've got my gold leaf, so if you want to get your gold leaf ready, and we're going to put some, I'm going to pop some glue on when I'm off camera as well to make these tacky. We're going to get the gold leaf on and then we're going to slap it on the cake. Right, okay, so uh, now I've uh, cut them out. I've put some glue on, some edible glue, made them nice and sticky. I've got my 24 karat gold uh, leaf here. So I want to just release the leaf. Uh, oh, and this one's been used. I was not expecting that, so that's going to get there. Now, if these two are used, I'm going to have a little cry because I've only got enough for the, the four bits. Please don't have been used. Oh, there we go. 
There we go, lovely. Okay, so it goes on diagonally across so it fits on. Okay, and then all we want to do is just go down. There we go. Whoa, my goodness. I've never seen that happen before. Instantly stuck. That's a good sign. I had a little bit of glue stuck in my finger, so it pulled it back off. Okay, normally you leave it time to sort of dry. Okay. Well, oh, I think the glue is just mega sticky. Yep, just mega sticky glue. There we are. Okay, that doesn't that didn't happen that one. That one just went on nice like that. So uh, it's just obviously I'll have one of those one of these days. Uh, so we just want to go around and really just brush off with a nice soft brush, so we can see the detail. Wow, must have been mega sticky. Okay. Right, so there's a few wee bits that just haven't stuck down. And there. Now, with the excess we have here, which isn't much because of what happened there, just place it over the chosen area. Just give it a little brush. And hopefully, yeah, it just sticks down. Now that end bit's very dry, so it's obviously not, this wee tiny wee bit here, not got any glue on it. Okay, and a little bit of tissue paper. Just take the, the major stickiness away, and then just pop that on there. Oh, it comes off straight away, my goodness, that's, that's good. There we are. Okay, and then the same, this other side here. Now that's a wee bit sticky still. go. And I think that looks pretty much done. Okay, so just to give it a little brush down. Okay, so I just pop that onto there. Now you can see that it still looks a little bit rough. Some of that gold, so just dab it down. You can see it better on the uh, on the table there. I think I had maybe too much glue on the, too much moisture. So it just feels a bit rough there, which is not so good. So I'm just gonna be, feel, right, okay. So what I'm gonna do is get this one. Now I'm not gonna use glue for this, just gonna use some water. So it's not too sticky. Okay, that's there. Then get your tissue. Just take off the excess. There you go. Okay, and just place that on. That was a bit better actually, yeah. So that was a uh, glue I used, but I think the water was better. Now I think that could probably have something to do with the fact that the it's just cut out, so the paste is still wet. That was definitely a better one there. There we go. Okay, now that's dry, so again, just a little bit of water on the wee bits that have been missed. And 
and then just press down hopefully yep there we go I think as you know it's 24 karat gold it's like oh wasted it it's, it's all good okay so uh let's just just uh, pop that down there. Again, there's still a few wee rough bits, so I'm just going to pat that down to try and smooth it off. There we go. Okay, so we've got one more to do. Now, I think that was the last sheet, wasn't it? So I'm going to have to try and patch it up, which is probably quite a good way to um, do it. So my idea was that the, the, the patch bits, these bits here, what we're going to do with these chappies is we're going to put some glue on these and just get some of the gold leaf to go on the leaf, uh, which would be quite nice, just patchy. So the idea is just to have little speckles of gold on these ones. Um, and, it's, and it is going to be speckles of gold because obviously we've got limited uh, stuff here. Now, yeah, that's going, to be a, that's going to be a problem, this, isn't it? So I'm going to just try and do one little bit at a time. Let's just see. Trying to cut it so it just takes off what it needs. Just doesn't take it all off. Oh man. I'm just having one of those days. My goodness, what's happened to the... I've obviously got the wrong side of the bed. Okay. Yep, so definitely the water works better. I've pre, I had pre-gold these one, uh, pre-soaked one of these in, in glue, so I can't go back. So all I'm doing is got to just keep adding the gold on. Is this Friday the 13th by any chance? No, it's just past actually, so I think maybe it's just late and arriving for me. There we go. I'm definitely managing to get all this covered in gold. I'm just not going to have much left to do the leaves. There we go. Okay, that wee bit there's just not sticking on, so just a little bit of glue. There we are. Good. There we are. Oh, got a sore back. Lean over today. A lot of lean over today. Right. right. Behave yourself. There we are. Now we have got a spare one, but that's not going to get used because we've not got enough gold. So these these four have got to go on. Now I think we need to get them on now before they go hard, or we'll not be able to get them stick on properly. Right, all this gold, it just feels wrong, but never mind. Okay, so we've got the glue to stick them on. Now, while I was off camera, I, I just marked the ribbon, so I know exactly where each one should sit. So if I just get the pin tool, the, uh, the scriber, should I say, and uh, I just want to put a little mark just where the middle of each one should go. Nice big ganache mark there. There we are. Oh, God, you're going to see it. I'm just having one of those days. <laughs> I'm thinking it's going to hide it, but I've just realised it a little bit. Anyway, I'll show you to fix that in a second. <laughs> right, OK. So uh, let's get the, the first one that we made, because that should be relatively dry. And now we just want to flip that on there. Get a little bit of glue. And just go. 
I do apologise. I feel like I'm very negative today. It's all good. It's a beautiful wedding cake. Okay, across there. Right, okay, so there's the first one going to go there. We want to drop down. Okay, let's see if I can just hide that little mark that I made there. Have I managed to hide it? Yeah, we have. There we go. There we go. And that looks nice, so it's worth it. Okay, that's good. Okay, let's get the next one on. Oh no, don't stick to the paper. That's not allowed today. <laughs> Come on, you're not allowed to stick to the paper. No. Now you can see that one seems a little bit higher. So I'm just going to bring it down. Now, the swords are, so to speak, have crossed over, so I just push that over a little bit. Okay, now a little bit of gold leaves came off there, so I'm going to fix that. But I'm going to leave it on the other now, because it still has a kind of gold, a gilded look to it, so I'm going to keep it on. Now, it seems a little bit higher up than this one, so hopefully this one's still slightly softer yeah so also the spacings needs to be it needs to be lifted up a little bit there we are okay and then a little bit of glue there we are that's fine so there's a bit of gold came off there once that dry dries i'll go back and put that on okay so let's give this a shot again now what, i'm going to make sure it's not sticky no that's fine this is a good one, so you're going to be a good boy, this one. Now I'm going to bring it right down to the edge straight away. There we are. This one's going to stick on so nicely. Okay. There we are. See? Told you. It's making nice tip. Okay, and the height's good. This needs to come down just a fraction. There we go. Go and then hopefully that gap at the back there is going to be okay. Right. Okay. This one feels sticky already. It's instantly stuck to the paper. Oh, it's going on. Right, I'm just going to put this on by hand. It has firmed up a little bit. Sometimes we just have one of those days when you're making cakes, and today's definitely that for me. Okay, that's fine. Right, okay, making sure they're just all the same height, which they are. That's fine. Now you can see there's wee bits just hanging out there, so just a little bit of glue at the back. Just stick them down. Okay, now the wee holes that I made, the big mistake I made there with the ganache and the wee pin. If you get the pin tool and you just want to scrape that ganache away. 
and then we've got a little bit of royal icing. So we just fill the hole with some royal icing. That one you can just see it. That one's the hole, that one's definitely chocolate. Okay, so there we go, okay. So, uh, where am I? Over this side. Uh, so I'm going to tidy up. Uh, as I say, I'm going to put some. Uh, I'm going to put some glue on these just to show you just quickly. Just what we just pretty much did there. Just randomly put glue on. And all I want to do is get the leaf and just place it on. And I just want the gold leaf just to st really just little bits, just hint of the gold leaf over it just so it kind of gives it a slight, when it's against the rose, you're just seeing a little bit of that gold coming through. Okay, so I'll get busy doing that. I'm going to cover these in the gold uh, bits, and then we come back, we're going to put the royal icing on the cake. Hi, welcome back. So now we're going to move on to finishing off the, the top tier, oh, sorry, the middle tier, uh, with the, the royal icing. Um, so this is a little bit tricky, this bit, because we've got to try and uh, match up the, the pattern. So first of all, let's make sure the pattern's the right way around, which it's not, that's the right way around. Is that right? Just to make sure. Yep, that's it. So I want to come around and it should just match up um, the, the, the style. So once you've got that on there, hold it there and then you want to bring this around. So you're always going to want a bit that doesn't match, unfortunately. Okay. Once that's on there, hold on to the little end pieces. There we go. Cross them over and then the same thing again. Now I've got cell tape there. Just to hold that down there, and then this bit here. I think that actually feels quite strong, so I'm going to leave that there. That's all grand, right? So I've got a wee space with that. Okay, so we want to get the royal icing. Now this stuff is still the excess from the last one, so it should be the right consistency. There we go. Now, you know how I put this on. I'm going to do it very quickly this way because it's just, it feels like I should be doing it this way. Okay, so just bear with me. So I'm just applying it on. Now, as you know, I've been having some problems today. It's just been one of those days. Um, this is the bits that the customers don't realise. <laughs> this is why you need to make sure you charge for your cakes properly. Because unfortunately, I've been making things that are handmade Sometimes we have down days like this, where the tools don't want to work. So that's partly why we've got to charge more money. The covered days like this, because it's all the customer's fault. <laughs> okay, there we go. You've just got to have a laugh about it. There we are. Right, okay. So, uh, now we get the scraper, just still in the sink from where I chucked it. Okay, and then we just want to scrape off the the excess. Okay, get your bowl ready. Okay, so again on there, and then we just want to go around and scrape that off. Now, I'm going to be very, very naughty here. I'm just going to cut through this for speed. So he says, and it's not cutting. Ah, there we go. Whoa. There we go. Done. Okay. Excellent. There we go. Okay. So if we come around this side. Right. Okay. So let's get rid of the, the wee bits and bobs that we don't like. So first of all, let's pull the top off because obviously the gravity is pulling it down. Go. There we are. There we are. And then just get the knife. Okay, and then just trim off that excess. Okay. 
Okay, and just clean that up. Okay, and then just get your paintbrush. And then the same thing again, we just want to go around. Now you can see that wee bit there just doesn't look right. Okay. It's interesting because this bottom one is bled again. Okay, and in this last bit here, just where the join was, um, you can see there, it's just not quite finished nicely. So I'm just going to pat down those little, little bits. Can you kind of blend them in? So that now is officially the back of the cake. There we are. Okay, so I think that's been good. It's been a good lesson. It's been a little bit stressful, but stenciling always is. And I think it's came out quite well. Now, I'm not a big, I don't do a lot of stenciling, but it's going to give you the idea on how to do it. And practice makes perfect. So if you do this all the time, you'll be a pro at it. So he says. Okay, so uh, that's that bit done. So uh, now it's time to stack the cake. Hi, my name's Paul Bradford, and welcome to Module 1, Baking and Filling. After working and running businesses in the cake world for the last 25 years, I want to share some of the secrets on how to bake the perfect cake. So the first thing you're going to learn to bake in this module is three of the most popular cakes from a Madeira cake, a rich chocolate cake and of course the traditional rich fruit cake. Then you're going to move on to learn how to make the most beautiful fillings for your cakes from my tried and tested buttercream recipe and my three most popular ganaches, the dark chocolate ganache, the milk chocolate ganache and the white chocolate ganache. And the last stage of this module is how to cut and fill your cake. So you've got a single Medina cake here and a double barrel chocolate cake. I'm going to take you through all the different stages, how to get a level finish, how to fill the buttercream, how to fill the ganache, and of course how to get a lovely and crisp sharp finish. Once you've completed this module, you're going to be confident in baking the perfect cake to suit any designer wedding cake or novelty cake. Welcome to module one, baking and filling. Okay, so now it's time to, um, to stack the cake. Um, so obviously it's not dummy cake, so it's a real cake, so it's a bit more fragile. So I've put my nine dowels in. All right, so I drew, drew the circle, so it's an eight inch cake. So I got an inch card, drew the circle round and put the dowels in and got them all nice and level. The same with this, so it's a four inch round cake going on top and then nine dowels in there as well. Um, so the first thing I want to do is just pop some royal icing in here so it doesn't move. Now, I filled some of the little holes earlier on there before we came back on, on the top tier. Remember the little holes that I put in? just to, to mark it. So I just got some white royal ice and, and blended it away so you can't see the marks anywhere anymore. So that looks that looks better. Okay, now this has just been royal iced about five, 10 minutes ago. Um, so I'm going to take a risk and just go for it. Now, I just want to maybe just, is that hard? Yeah, let's just get rid of this crusty stuff. So it doesn't go on the cake. Right, okay. So where was that? That's the back. Okay, so I want to go in from the front, around. Now there's a cake drums underneath. Okay, right, so that's it released. Okay, so where's the back? Here's the back of this cake here. So I want to put my hand on the front, lift it up, and place it down using the palette knife. So in there. And then remember, there is ganache underneath, so. Just want to go down on there and just hopefully 
remember with a little bit of cake, came off a little bit of sugar paste at the back there, but we can fix that, that's not a big problem. Okay, so, uh, so first of all, actually, I should make sure it's in the middle, which it's not. So I just give it a wee shimmy across. Doesn't take much to balance it. Oops. Too far the way. There we go. Yep, that feels good. Okay, so we just want to go round. Oh, where's this ganache came from? Okay, so I just tuck that in. Let's get rid of these wee marks. Round. Now there's some chocolate marks down there, so let's just get rid of that as we go. So a little bit of the alcohol, leave it on the table. Get a clean brush, just while it's still fresh. And there we go. We're going to put a ribbon round there anyway, so. Okay, right, that's fine. So just make sure that's nice and neat. Yes, it is. That's good. So let's just... Now, I've got to clean this knife because I've got to lift the top tier off. And I like to use a nice thin knife uh, for that, so... And then we just want to repeat the, the same for the top. Now I've got two palette knives there. Okay. So let's just uh, this the side. Right. Okay, so let's get the Royal Ison again. Right now, let's just check. That one's the worst one. So that's the back. There we go. Okay, and then the same thing again. Didn't you throw that one released very easily? Actually, I'm just going to use the knife. Okay, make sure I've got a clean hand. Okay, it's just a small cake, so. Up we go. There we are. Right, so I was going to turn it around. Oh, I didn't put it on at the back. Did I? Yes. <laughs> right. Okay, so just give it a little movement. There we go. Excellent. There we are. Okay, so there we are. So that's the cake stack. So I'm going to quick tidy up. I'm going to get rid of all the junk, bring, bring the flowers over. We're going to get the ribbons to hide these messy joins and the pearls, etc. Uh, and then we then finish off with the, the roses. Okay, welcome back. So now we're going to put the, to hide the little joins, because it's a little bit messy. Um, so a couple of options. We can, we can go for the thicker ribbon, which looks fine. So you can see there, that looks, that looks nice, going over the top of the Royal Ison. Oops, wrong way around. Let's see. Let's see what we think. So that one looks nice. So that looks good. Um, or we could just go for a very subtle, just to hide the messy edge, just for go for a very small, plain, is that a cream one? What does Greg think? That one? Yeah, I think that looks nice and just, it, it's not, it doesn't catch your eye as much, I think, is the big one. So we, um, that's fine. So we're going to go for that. That was a yes from Greg. Now to stick that down, we can use a little bit of Royal Ison or we can just wet it. And then if you wet it, as long as you dry it, take the water off. It will all dry the same, the same colour. Okay, so just place it on. The problem is it's wanting to slide round, it's been naughty. And that just takes the eye away from that uh, untidy edge that we've got down there. Now there's a wee 
the mark there. Oh, oh, because I'm in block. <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to bring that ribbon down a wee bit. There, that's fine. Okay, and then the same up the top. Now, a little problem at the top is we've got the tails from this, this doodah here. Uh, which I had never thought of, which I put the ribbon on first. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to be a bit naughty, I'm just going to trim a little bit of that away, just so we can fit that ribbon on. And no one's going to know about it about us, apart from us. Okay. Oops, whoops, not cut the cake. Okay, so just cut that off, and then we just want to get the... the now, another idea, sorry, was the pearls. Um, I'm not really keen on these ones, but we could put the... the actually, yeah, that does look all right. Uh, maybe it looks okay with that top tier with the, the gold. That does look okay, or... Greg's not sure about the pearls. Okay, so I think the pearls look okay. We're, we're kind of in between here, but I think we're going to go for them, are we? Yeah, let's just go for them. That's fine. Just, it just adds another dimension. There we go. That's fine. And then these won't stick down with water. So we've got to use a little bit of royal icing. Where's my royal icing? There we go. So if you can, put in a little piping bag, which will just stick it on a bit better. I'm going to be very naughty and just use some royal icing at the back. So just pop a little bit royal, and I'm just going to wash that off. So I'll just clean off the excess. Okay, now the little bits at the back just need to be cleaned off. So I just cover that up so it doesn't get all. Oh, okay. Just grab a little paintbrush. Have a wee bit of my biscuit. There we are. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Okay, there we are. How's that? Stand back. Yep, now it's strange, there's a few wee dark bits there which is a bit odd. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to fill them with royal icing. Okay, and then wash away so we don't see it. Yeah. Okay, so I'll do the rest of that later, just fill the week if there are any gaps there. No, that looks fine. So that's good. So that's kind of covered up all the all the bits that we don't like. So we just want to wake this out of the way. And then we're on to our beautiful flowers. Onto the roses. Okay. So what we want to do is obviously just take away the the foam. It should, yeah, I was going to say it should be set. It's actually still a little bit soft. It's definitely been a lot of moisture in this air. And look at that, a nice big green foam in the back there. Nice big roses there. Okay, so it worked out really well. Right. Okay, and then the same with this one. And I just want to give them a little dust. Now, I want the outside of it to be relatively just white. I just want to give the, the, the middle bit a bit of warmth. So that's thank you to Nicholas for that lovely tip with the sponges. So let's bring the brushes over. Okay, so uh, so what I've got here is the topaz, which is what we actually used to make the this colour here, uh, and then we've just got some champagne and some uh, and some pastel gold dust. So we'll just grab a paint palette. Okay, now this is more effective, I think, on a colour rather than on just white, but I'm going to pop it on first 
just to see. Yeah, you're not really seeing that. So what we'll do is we'll use that on the outer petals. So we've got a gold, a bit of a gold coming from it, but it's keeping it still that nice light color. And these are still a little bit soft, these petals. So I'm gonna have to pop this back in here actually. There we go. Oh yeah, that's lovely. Okay. So hopefully you can see that. Can you see that, Greg? Is that, yeah. You can just see that, lovely. Okay, really nice. Okay, so and then we'll just do the same with this one. And it's actually making the, the veins pop out of the, the petals, which is nice. So once we attach these onto the cake, the good thing is they're going to be sitting sideways. So the gravity is not going to pull these petals off because I've not got any more time left to leave them to dry. So ideally, you really want to leave these overnight, not just the same day. Okay, so that's good. And then these guys, you can see here with a little bit of gold coming off the back of them. What might be quite nice just to add a bit more bling. Yeah. I think we just have to just to give them a bit more of a pearlized finish. Yeah, that looks nice. Okay, so we just want to do that to all these. Okay, I'll do this off camera. So I'll just get busy. And then when we come back, we're going to pop the, the flowers on and then that's the cake finished. Okay, so it's been a bit of a jaunt, this cake, and uh, we had some problems near the end of filming on, what day is this? This is Tuesday, it's been Easter over the weekend, so it must have been Friday. Um, so on Friday, we had a few, a few technical problems, and I, I'm really putting it down to the weather. We had a lot of problems with the cake lace, uh, with the stickiness, etc., 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 and then the roses was the, the final straw for me. And um, what happened was I tried to make the roses all in one day, which is not a good idea, and we just got the floppy itis, and they were really soft. So you can see here, uh, the last film we did, uh, which you won't see because we have cut it out, I normally try and keep everything in, is when I lifted the rose up, the rose just started to, to basically uh, collapse on me, okay? So what I did, uh, because I was a bit worried about it, um, so I've put the posy pick in the back, okay? So uh, just to make sure you know, posy pick, it's little plastic things that you put on so it can go straight into the cake, okay? Now what does I put some tape, so here's one I've not done yet actually, so we'll just do it to this one. So uh, we want to get the posy pick the size, so there we go. So I'm just going to trim that. Okay, and then just check the posy pick's going to slide over there. Yep, that's good. Now what I did was, because I was having so much problems with, the, with it being so soft, I was hoping to finish the cake on um, Friday, but unfortunately I couldn't. So um, what I did is I, I, we put some, I put some white royal icing that was left over from this, the royal ice tier. So I put the royal icing on, hoping that would just go hard and keep it up, but it just still wasn't happening. So uh, so we had to just abandon the filming for the, the, the weekend. And then we came back on uh, today and it's absolutely dry as a bone and uh, nice and hard and no problems at all. Now the very good thing is the day we were filming, it was raining so hard. Um, and then all of a sudden, uh, Scotland had a, a mini heat wave for spring and it was up to 20 degrees over the weekend, which is fabulous. So of course the roses have dried really, really well. So, so out of all the years of making flowers, that's the first time I've had such a problem with flower paste, to be honest. Um, but I think it was just the conditions, it was so wet. So the nice thing is it is dry and, uh, and the, the flowers are absolutely uh, back to normal again. So the uh, so only slight problem I have is this one, when it fell, when it started collapsing, the, the petals did slightly fall down because I put it in that way. So you can see there, we've got a bit of a gap, a little gap there. But the way I'm going to put the leaves on, we're not going to see that hopefully, the time it's on. So th there's what happened. So that's um, all part of the, the joy of cake decorating. Now, if that had been a situation where the wedding was the next day, um, what we'd have to have done was probably put the oven on at a very low temperature, uh, extremely low temperature, and just sit the flowers 
uh, on the, the door here and just let that dry air just circulate around and really dry the petals out and that would have been probably for about a half day. Okay, so if that happened, I wouldn't have went home until they had completely dried and then wake up on the, the Saturday morning and then it would have been all back to hopefully normal. The joys of making cakes. So, um, so what we're going to do now is uh, we're just going to tape this one up that's not got the posy pick um, on it. So I'm just using some full width tape and that's really just so that the posy pick stays in place. So, uh, so you can see also I tried to attach it onto the cake and that's where we had the, the problems there. So uh, that's a good job I'm not making cakes for the public. There we are. So that's in nice and solid, so we can just push that straight into the cake, which is lovely. Okay, so let's decide uh, which one is going on the top. Uh, I think the, the, the more rounded one should go up, up top. Uh, yeah, so let's just see. Let's see. Probably that way. Okay, so over to the cake. Um, so obviously this ice is now really, really hard, um, but hopefully we can still uh, get that in there. Now I think what I'm going to do, because I've made that little hole there, I'm going to get a knife and just cut that dry bit away. through the thick layer of ganache that's on there. Right, I'm just going to cut. There we go. Just take that bit there. Right? Okay. I forgot which rose it was. Was it that one? This one. That one? Now, it just needs to, I think we've got too big a, a back to this flower, and I don't want it to be sitting so far off the cake. So I'm just going to cut more off so we can sink the flower into the cake a little bit more. It's just a little bit tricky because it's hard. But at least we know it's not going to go anywhere. So I'm just going to... There we go. Okay, risky chocolate on my hands. Right. Oh yeah, there we go. That's better. Yep. Yep, there we are. That's good. Does it feel safe? Yep, that feels safe. Good. Okay, so just get the chocolate off there. So stand back and admire your, your work. That looks good. Um, okay, so that's lovely. So let's get the second the second flower in. So standing back and looking at the cake, so if I sort of bring it around here, I'm just sort of wanting this second one to sit around about here. So just above that peak there. So if I just turn that around, <coughs> and I want it just to sit about there, perfect. Okay, so the same thing again. So we just want to get the little uh, posy pick. I'm just pushing it in, there we go, lovely. Now that one has got a bit of a sticking out a bit more, but we can get away with it because of this or oh, this lip. So we don't have to dig into this one. So that, that, that keeps it nice flat. So stand back and enjoy. And then that's up good. Okay, so that's fine. So we can move our little uh, cuppy holders out of the way. Okay, so now we move on to putting the, the leaves on um, to, the, to the cake. So what we've got to do, again, the same thing again is Unfortunately, we do have to use the posy picks to pop them in. Okay, so it goes over there like so. So we just again need to put the tape on. Now, I, do, I know the uh, cake competitions, uh, when you do cakes, even if you do a dummy cake, it's not a real cake inside, uh, this, you've still got to use posy picks, which I discovered last weekend, which does seem a bit crazy. Um, but it's the, obviously you're trying to simulate as if it was a real cake. There we go. Oops. 
I think I've cut too much off that wire, so I'm just going to just tape it up a bit more, make it a little bit thicker. There we are. Okay. So we want to pop that on, and then we're just going round to the back of the cake. We want to keep it relatively close to the cake. And then once that's in there, oh, I've got my tweezers, I'll just use the, the wire cutters. I want to feed that down and into the back there like so. You can see so we're getting the nice leaf coming out the back. Okay, so we want to do that just to attach them all on. Okay, so just cut. There we go. But what I'll do is I'll just quickly tape these up off camera, there's no point in watching me. And when I come back, then we'll just put the rest of them on. Okay, so now we're going to add on the, the, the rest of the leaves. Um, I'm not sure how many we need. It might only be two, it might be four, it might be six. So we'll just see how it, how it goes. Um, so I think obviously naturally the, the next thing to do is, uh, I've got them all in the little posy picks, is pop one on at the back of this one as well. I started to sound like a robot the way I said that there. Okay, so you see they're just again, just in the back there and if you just get your tweezers and then you can just pop that down like so there we go that's fine that's nice so you can see it just sort of coming out there like so now the next thing is do we want to have maybe a second one coming out there yeah we do that looks lovely okay so just looking underneath so I can see where it's to go so right in here okay and then again just get the tweezers and just use that to push it into place. There we go. That looks good. Yep. So we want to probably just to just to mirror that on on the top, just so it looks nice. Um, so again, just have a little play. See what looks nice. Yeah. Oops. That one's not getting used. Okay, so I'm going to take that. That's quite good because I can use this as my guide now that it's broken. Uh, so that looks quite nice having one hanging down the way. Um, let's just see. I'm thinking. I don't know why I'm thinking a cat's, eye, a cat's ears when it's up there like that. Maybe do we need three on this one? Oh yeah, maybe that looks quite nice. Let's try three. Okay, so I do want the three maybe that way. No, I think on top was nicer. Okay, so pop it in again. There we are. Okay, yeah, it looks nice. And then you know, I'm thinking we might be able to use this one, so I'm thinking maybe we need one that's not just as long. So let's just see if we can break that off a bit smaller. Actually, let me just stand back and have a look. Yeah, it definitely needs one down below. So let me pop that in there. Now that's a problem, something you can come across and hit into the, the other posy picks. Oh, it's not wanting to stay there now. Okay, it's, not, it's just fallen out, so I just need to put some more tape around it. So it keeps it in its position. It's almost, it's almost like a, um, do you know they use the, when you're using screws, what's it called? Uh, um, Got the name of it. What's it called? When I mean, you're screwed into the wall, a raw plug. It's like a raw plug. So you've got to make sure that they, they, they both fit properly. Yeah, that feels good. Right, use the tweezers this time. Okay, so just standing back, having a look. Okay, 
Right, I think that should be it. Don't think we need one in this bottom one, but let's just check. Or maybe we do. That looks quite nice there, actually. Yeah. So I think we'll just put one just underneath there, right underneath that bit there. Okay, so just let's go pop this in first. There we go. And do the same with this. I'm just going to pop some more tape around it. There we are, and that's as I almost finished the cake. Okay, just use a tweezer just to push it in that bit further. There we are. Very good. Right. Okay, so just stand back. Yep, and there we go. All done. So, uh, one lovely uh, gold style wedding cake. Okay, so hopefully you've enjoyed watching the, the tutorial. Uh, it's been a bit of a, it was a bit of a hard uh, cake to make uh, due to sort of conditions uh, and made my hands not working as, as they normally worked. Um, but we, we finally got there and we got this lovely sort of golden style, uh, lovely damask wedding cake. Um, so uh, just other ideas for this cake. Um, obviously, very, very simple. And this is just, is, is just tweaking the colours uh, of the cake. So, so what would be quite nice is that obviously it'd be nice to add a little bit of pink. So instead of putting the cream in here, we could just put a little bit of pink just to give it a warmth in the middle of it which would look really nice and it would contrast really nice uh, with the gold uh, metallic on there, the, the, the gold leaf. Um, obviously if you don't have the, the cake stencil, uh, the um, cake lace for the bottom, uh, we could um, just use a different type of um, stencil. So rather than use the lace, just use another stencil on the bottom. Or you could do some hand uh, painting um, on there. Or you could also do some brush embroidery with the royal icing, which would look nice around the bottom. Um, the, the, for the middle one here, what would be quite nice if you wanted to bring a bit more gold to it, if you've got all the time in the world, you could go over with a brush and slightly paint a little bit more of a gold onto all the royal icing just to make it a little bit more golden if you wanted which would be nice um, and then the top tier rather than do this sort of pattern if you want to keep it a bit more plain we could just put a nice sheer ivory ribbon around there or sort of gold tone ribbon around there if you want to try and keep it a little bit more simple uh, for that as well if you've not got the naked leaves uh, the cutter from Stephen Benson uh, you could pipe them from royal icing so if you pipe the you can pipe the, the leaf uh, design rather than use the cutter so just pipe it over the wire uh, and then let it set and then once that's set you can just pop it in there and that's just a different way from doing it from the cutter which is good uh, and then obviously if you want a complete change we could just go for complete silvers uh, some more silver tones so you could you could do the metallic and the silver uh, which would be nice or even just a pearl white which would be nice around there uh, instead of using the, the gold leaf you could use the silver leaf on there uh, likewise this tier here so this could be like a grey tone uh, tier which would be very in vogue uh, and then again silver leaf up top here now these cutters you don't have to use these cutters you can just come up with your own design. I'm sure you've all got little cutters lying around for that. Uh, and then likewise, uh, just the, the overall look, uh, just giving us a, more of a silvery tone. Okay, so hopefully you've enjoyed watching uh, the other ideas and hopefully see you all again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>